fires, he does incantation, he went to the school, he joined cults. Make sure that he sends arm robbers to us on guard with his gun. So he will just lay ambush waiting for these people. So the demon took his life, dream several minutes. I killed my father. I was attacked in the club. Make sure I stabbed them, I broke bottles, I struck them knife. Let me see how that evil spirit will come and do those yeah, yeah, over there. Stopping in there with my legs, what I heard is ta 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 ta. Evil spirit got angry, provoked. And as they started asking me which cult you belong to, they said today that I will die. And the agreement was that we have to kill one person. This man I'm dealing with, I'm not just dealing with him, but I'm dealing with association. They are big boys from the look of things. And these are small, small, tegere, tegere children. They say you are welcome to Black God's house. Some are drinking. There is one particular guy that were lying lifelessly, telling me about all of them. The sacrifice they made before becoming a member. Person started transforming. He started transforming into a being, expanding, going, and his voice also changed to a lady's voice. He becomes she. This is the goddess now. There hasn't been anyone who come to them like this and go for free. That that person must be initiated or die. Please like, share, hit the notification button, and please leave comments. I really want to know what you think about this video. And please subscribe. Thank you very much for subscribing. God bless. Love you. Hello everyone, this is Emma from Tema. I hope you're all doing good, which I know the Lord himself is keeping you all. Well, today is so exciting. The reason is because the deliverance that you watched last week, this is the continuation of it, the testimony of it. If you haven't watched the deliverance, please go and watch it. It was really wild. Now come along with me and let's watch this testimony in squad. Just as Pastor Evan Joshua had declared, Christ will put an end to it. One thing is clear, demons know they must submit to the name of Jesus. And that was how the man was said we shall put our hands together for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Indeed, darkness know that they must flee at the sight of light. And he's here in our midst to testify about the goodness of God in his life. So you're very welcome. Can you tell us your name and tell us the goodness of God in your life? Okay. My name is Patrick. I'm in Nigeria. And I came from, I live in Southtown, um, Ishan, Bahrain precisely. That's where I reside, and I'm coming from there. Children of God, my fellow brethren, you can see it all. The clip you just watched is nothing but absolute true. I want you to help me shout, Emmanuel, three times. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, uh, it's not easy. It has not been easy, but uh, to God be the glory. So I'm here to testify the goodness of the Lord upon my life. As you all have watched the clip, that is exactly what it is. And... Uh, if I will start it up, I will say it all started from childhood when I was a little child. When I was a little child, so I came from the background of idol worshipping. We grew up to see our parents taking us to the village. Anytime they want to go to the village, so they take us to the village. When they get to the village, we always discover that there is this uh, tree that is situating there in the village, but that particular compound where that tree is situated is not a personal compound of his, but it's of uh, forefathers' things, more like to say my grandfather. So as of then, so now he goes there and he kills a uh, fowl, some kind of fowl, and uh, he makes sacrifice. He, those incantation, 
Sometimes he rings bells and says some things, and before we know it, the fowl that was killed and sacrificed to that tree, he will cook it and call every available children to come around and they will eat that uh, prepared uh, chicken. So that is how they initiate children and then it follows them to their old age. It's so sad. That is sacrificed to the gods because that happens to be gods. So, and when he's sharing the, the, the chicken, the cooked chicken, I discovered that he will always preserve the edge to the elder, the most eldest person there. Maybe if he's among us, the siblings, my siblings, my elder, elder one, he will give the head to the elder one. And the leg, he will give it to the, to the youngest one. So this thing continued as a routine to him. And uh, later on, we also noticed that this demon started tormenting the rest of my family members in the sense that unknowingly to him, my father, because I don't know how to put it, but maybe he was ignorant as of them. But that happens to be demon, and that demon travels so far to anywhere it can go because in the spirit, that is what it is. So it started tormenting every member of my family to the extent that there is this, my elder brother, elder brother, our eldest. This guy, this demon tormented him to the extent that instead of him schooling, he went to the school and he joined courts. He joined courts. He started practicing courtism here and there, and he became very violent. There is this anger that's always draining him. He can do unto any time, and that is his kind of person. This thing continued to the extent that one time, we didn't know how it all happened because he's such a notorious person in that court activity that he normally, you know, carry out. So one day, the same this demon, because anything demon is not a great thing. It has devil is trickish, like we all Christian knows. So he has it, he has different ways of manipulating things and you know transforming and taking care of things. So now that same demon now always make sure that he sent arm robbers, arm robbers to us where we are living somewhere in Delta. So that demon always sent arm robbers to us. Every time, because my father had a business center, every time he said that the demon, the, the arm robbers goes to the business center and rob or they come to the house. This thing continued and that made my father to be security conscious. So he now happened to always be uh, on guard with his gun somewhere. In the night, instead of him to sleep in the house, so he would just lay ambush waiting for these people. But at the end, this my brother that I was talking about, the, my eldest brother, how, because of how notorious he was, along the line, something happened and he didn't make it. So the demon took his life. We know how wicked Satan is. That's why we shouldn't follow him. That is why we need deliverance to get away from him. No one should join courts. When you're in school, don't do it. When you have friends who initiate you into that, please, if you send something, go for deliverance because they can do it without you knowing it. You eat their food, you drink their drink, they will initiate you. Be careful. In the sense that he died too because of how notorious he was and recklessly his life was. So he lived reckless life, gallivanting, doing court activities here and there and all of that. Now, one thing, the story is too much, but I'm just trying to cut everything short in summary. So now later on, what I personally now that is here notice happens to be that Immediately when my elder brother was no more, when he died, I discovered that within me, 
almost the same thing my elder brother was into as a courtist, that same thing now starts happening to me. I'm sent to the school, I'm supposed to be in the school, but I went there and I mixed my academic career up in the sense that when I went there, instead of concentrating, I found myself mingling with irrelevant people. When I mean irrelevant people, notorious people, cut teeth for that matter, these, you know, bad influenced entities. So that was how they now lured me into their courts, their court too. So I became a courtist. And when I became a courtist, ah, people of God, it is well. I now notice that I have, then I had spirit of anger. Yeah, there is this spirit of anger that came upon me that uh, made me to do all sorts of things too. I started having serious hatred upon my father. I was so arrogant to him. As a father, I'm the son. I should be the one to obey and be very loyal, humble. But I find out that I'm always wanting him to be the one to do the opposite. To, be, to do the opposite, what I'm supposed to do to him. So I became very arrogant to him because of that hatred, but I know it was that demon too that was responsible. So these things continued and to an extent that where he runs his business, I happen to be the person who is always there with him, managing the business among all of my siblings. I don't know why it happens like that, but along the line, I discovered that uh, it's nothing I can continue with in the sense that I have had dreams, several, really, several occasions that I killed my father in the dream. Parents, we have to be praying for our children and talking to them concerning this initiation, concerning cultism. Because now it, it doesn't matter if you're a girl or boy, they don't mind initiating you. Parents have to be praying and talking to their children so that they won't fall into those traps. That's where the enemy want them. Please pray and talk to your children so they know that if this is happening, it's leading them to the wrong place. So they will move away from there. Gone are the days when we send children to school and we don't check on them. These days, especially because of internet, check on your children. Pray for them. Talk to them. Open the gap of communication between you and your children so you know what they are doing. Otherwise, you know what will happen. I killed him. And in the physical, I can see those the traces of those dreams. Like, if I give it space, if I'm not well controlled, something likely like that may come to pass in the physical. So I started seeing how I can control these things because I know there is something really wrong with me. So I try as much as I could to make sure I control such things. But meanwhile, I now knock the thoughts of traveling to abroad in order... So before you go, can you tell us those activities this evil spirit caused you to do? as a result of this spirit of anger? Okay, yeah, this, the spirits of anger led me to fighting. Yeah, I, become, I became a fighter, somehow fighter in the sense that, well, most of the fights that I indulged myself into wasn't really my own fight. It's either I'm in some way like club, people, group of court members will come and attack me. So when they attack me, I'll be like, what is all this? I'll be like, what is all this then? I will not know how come this, there is this spirit, that same spirit, I think it will come and overwhelm me, it will come and take hold of me and I'll be like, I can destroy and I, I can, I feel like destroying and killing everybody. But then, are they being, I'm um, that person who are, has given in to what the evil spirits always intend me to do? I would have been that kind of person that would be waiting around anywhere I go with gun. But because in my own way, somehow, I think somehow I become, uh, I'm, so, I'm sensitive. So I don't go with those things. So in that fighting, when, like one day I, I was attacked in the club. So I realized that at the end, 
I started hitting these people, fighting. Those people who stabbed me because they rushed me, they stabbed me, and they went off. I chased them, but I couldn't lay my hand on them. But when I came back, I realized that it was innocent people that I faced. And when I faced them, I feel like devouring them from nowhere. I know it's because of that evil spirit, but now I'm realizing not them. Not them. So, I, you know, there is this always big force that will come upon me and see. It, it happens to be very uncontrollable. So I would be like, okay, let me devour everybody. So I start fighting everybody, everybody I see, everybody those who came to my aid, who are there to rescue me, who are there to even tell me, I mean, encourage me or hold me, tell me to stop these whole things. And all that, I made sure I stabbed them, I broke bottles, I took them knife, I went to the shop owner, I went to the uh, shop, and I turned his freezer because there is a club setting. So I turned his uh, their drinks. I scatter everything, destroy everything, and I use all the bottle, my two hands, and chase everybody, stab everybody. Those who try to withstand me, I took took them, took them, and that was just it. So the following day, so the following day, because of that business center I just talked about that my father happens to be into. So it's more like uh, somehow popular around that uh, community. So they now carry their body, they carry everything as casualty that they become then, and to, they carry their body to him and start complaining, making all sorts of lamentation that this is what happened, this is what happened. And at the end, my father took care of them, take to hospital, set to family, all of this. This is how the evil spirit has been this is how the evil spirit has been tormenting me, tormenting my family at large. But now I'm talking of me. So, and I realized this whole thing when my elder brother went in for it. So, like, it's just like the next person in target is, was me, happens to be me. So, so that, before you go, can you now tell us what happened after you started having dream of you killing your father? Yes, so... When I started uh, having that dream of killing my father, yeah, so from there, I thought of, no, I can't do this, and there is no how I will stay and see this happen. So I lost the um, plan of going. I try all I could to make sure I gather off funds for that. When I try to gather off funds, these evil spirits also make all it could to swandalize squander all the funds for me so that I will not be, I will come, so that I can I shouldn't boast of good, huge amount of money that can enable me to travel out. So alongside, but at the end, I finally find myself in Southern uh, Isha. So when I find myself there, I say, oh, since I've left Nigeria, that now I'm in another country. Let me see how that evil spirit will come and uh, do those yeah, yeah, over there again. <laughs> evil spirit, they are spirits. So no matter where you go, they can come there. <laughs> so that's making me laugh. But little did I know that uh, as I left Nigeria, I didn't know that uh, the evil spirit followed me. Yes, he followed me to where I went to. So, you see, this evil spirit of a thing is trickish, my brethren. It's tr trickish. So, he followed me, and uh, I, when I got there, I tried all I could to be on low key, just to live my normal life and see how I can meet up to uh, make it in life because I know where I'm coming from. So, now, um, when I got there, I now went to a church. Yes, to start with. I went to a church because I was seeking for solution. So on reaching to that church, uh, I told them, I explained everything to them, and it's okay. Then after the whole thing, they now fixed me in their counseling department. They said I should be in the counseling department to counsel members on and on. And from there, because that evil spirit they sit there. They place me there as a counselor to counsel members, but meanwhile, I'm not delivered. I have all my own evil spirit within me. So that can't work. It can't really, I don't, you know, the trick is so severe that uh, ordinarily you can see that uh, that is not possible. 
So, uh, alongside me functioning there as a counselor in that uh, church ministry, uh, before I know it, another temptation from nowhere broke out. So when this temptation broke out, I was like, wow, why is this thing chasing me here and there? Anywhere I go, there's as a matter of fact, this evil spirit don't want anything good out of me. Like you all saw it there. You don't want anything good out of me. Not to talk of prosperity. Just for me to have innermost peace, just for me to be peaceful, is not that. Or we all know, though, that there is vow, he has his vow is to kill, destroy, and stay. So there is no peace anywhere there. So now, um, when I was there, this temptation broke out. Before I know it, I left that place again because of that huge temptation that was uncontrollable by me. So I said, no, instead of being here for this to happen and continue, let me just give them their maximum space and dash out, just go and be on my own. So I went off from there again, but my brethren, little dry know that going to the streets, I was thinking maybe the issue would be uh, down a bit, but I went there, little do I know that I, I'm going there to face the worst thing, the worst thing ever than where I was coming from, the church ministry. But then I wasn't that spiritually inclined somehow, and even I know I would have remained there, but to God be the glory. So now I went to the streets. As a young man who has just come to abroad, I have that desperation in me of making it. So I said, ah, since this thing is like this now, and uh, the demon has caused another commotion in where I'm supposed to relax and uh, me grow up. I said, so what's happened? So you know, what should I, where can I go from here? So then I met a man who now approached me, he talked to me about uh, a job. I said, oh, interesting, the job. I'm, I'm, that is lovely, I want to do job. He said, okay, now this is the kind of job. I said, wow. He said, that kind of job is accounts business. That when he gives to me accounts, I have to give out to some other people who need that account so that they can, when their clients call, they can easily deposit money. And when they deposit money, then I will be on percentage. I will be taking the percentage via to any amount that is being paid. So I will be taking the percentage. I said, okay. Then I dashed into the business. I started doing that. Then later on, as we were on that business, going, doing it gradually, gradually, on and on, then something now happened. One client now paid a huge amount of money to that said account. Then I contacted the account holder and I told him this is what happened. This social amount of money has been paid. Please, can you confirm it and see how you can make the withdrawal? So before I know it, this man went and freezed the account. So just like to say, he defrauded me and even my customers. So, and that is, uh, uh, is to, that story is not good in the sense that I am like the middleman, the third party. So he is the first person. My customer happened to be the third party. So my third party don't know this person, the first party, the account holder. I'm the one, I'm the, their eye, I'm the person they knew. So they fixed me and they said, no, that uh, something is wrong somewhere, that I connived with the, 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 the account order to defraud them, that I must provide that uh, money. So they made hold of me, they called me, they said I should come to a particular place so that we can settle the whole thing amicably. I went there, when I got there, I do not know, uh, for just a phone call that I should come, thinking that I'm going there to meet the guy, the person who I did transaction with. But on reaching there, I met lots of people, more than 20 people, and uh, many looking at them, they are all courtists. So I was like, on dashing there, stepping in there with my legs, what I heard is ta 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 from both sides, left, right, everywhere. So they started slapping me up and down. So I was like, so that was then, that was how this evil spirit in me now, you know, got angry, provoked. And I started, I retaliated. I gave to them to pay. Before I know it, they all now joined hands and held me strong and gripped me to the ground. 
So when I came to the ground, they said, no, that this boy, this boy, that there is one cause that is not known. There is something about this boy that this boy shouldn't have gotten that cause to do this kind of thing to us. He's the one at fault. He's the one who has our money. It's not our money. Now instead of him to be humble and loyal and receive the splat, the beating they gave to him, now he's returning that there is something they started asking me which court do you belong to? Hey, my people of God, when you start, it never ends until it takes you down to your grave. Anything like that, please act out. Go for deliverance. For you to be free, you need to do that. You hear the story, decide for yourselves. Because we know it is only a courtist who we have this kind of gods. So I kept quiet. They were asking me, asking me, I kept quiet. So, but before I know it, there happens to be one guy who knew me from, from Nigeria. I saw him there. So it was the one who now said to them that, yes, I know this boy. This boy belonged to so-so-so courts. They said, oh, no wonder. We said it. Okay, they said today that I will die. Say, but by so doing, that they have to call the court members, my court members then, my court members who happens to be there that they knew already, they know them. So they put a call across to these people they know, they call them to come and testify, to come and confirm if I'm their member or not. So when those people now came there, they looked at me and they said, no, they told them they don't know me. All of them now kept quiet. From there, they said, but they should give them some time. They now took me to the lavatory that is uh, in a private place to now interrogate me. So when they were, they now asked me, uh, what's up? I said, it's fine. So they now asked me, who am I? So from there, that same spirit now, you know, entered me. So I couldn't deny. I didn't deny to them. I now opened up and I started speaking the language with them, telling them, uh, they say, oh, oh. so they now hugged me. After which they went back to the crowd, those uh, more than 20 people, they caught it. They, they, not, they not told them that this matter, they should leave it. That uh, I should uh, get uh, the 40,000 rupees in that currency over there that I should give to them, or that they will not give to them that time, that it, that it, it, it is them who will give the, this thing to them. So from there, I started, they now took me to a place. That place they took me to happens to be where they were having meeting. So I now joined them. That was how I now joined them. Joined them, doing all the court activities again. Just like my old me when I was in Nigeria. So, you know, I never knew because I was thinking uh, everything will go where, but that is how Satan operates everywhere, he said. So now, uh, I started operating as a courtist, even over there, with them functioning to the extent that some one time a uh, problem ar ar arose in the sense that they have issue with other court member. So and they assigned uh, they assigned me to go and uh, carry out the operation that I should set, pick one or two person to join myself and go and make sure that the operation will be successful. I said, okay, so I picked the people that I, I wanted to pick and we went for the operation. We missed the target that day. And the agreement was that we have to key one person or we have one other person beating up mercilessly. That if the person dies on the process, fine. But the other one option was that we have to key that person and make sure that that person dies by bullets. So, um, we went in and we missed the target. Then later on, as I was there going on my own, I now discovered that the same these people were looking for. I now saw one of them. So, I have something in me said, that ah, this is this guy. This is one of them. Go, get him killed. I was like, ah, get him killed. So, something again in me, because... It, Oh, always from child, there's always these two spirits being directing. One would be saying, do this, one would be saying, don't. It has always been like this. But along the side, so I now decided not to 
killed that guy. I find myself advising him, telling him that um, he shouldn't do such thing. That he should send a message to his members that anytime they see uh, these people, they see these my people, they should always give them their much more space. Otherwise, if I see them or we see them again in any way doing such rubbish to any of our members that they will not uh, escape deaths and will not count in one but will count in numbers. So, so you mean this affirms the confession of the evil spirit that said it wanted you to kill but you didn't kill? Yes, exactly. So can you continue? Yeah. So alongside that happens to be uh, uh, court activities. But then there is always this, you know, um, these feelings, this mindset of mine that always try telling me I have to make money, that I'm here for money, not for court, court activities or whatever, that I have to make money. So I now started trying to see how I can make money since uh, these people, since uh, the account business didn't work for me. So at the end, um, I, now, I now find myself back on the streets. Then I, one day, as I was stepping out of my place, I met this man. This man now said to me that there is something he's looking for. I said, what could that be? He said, he's looking for drug. I said, what? He said, drug. He said do you, you said there is a guy he was calling. There is calling, he's in contact with somebody, but that person is not responding to stimuli. That the person is not picking his calls and all that, that they don't know what the problem is. That and they needed this thing so urgently because they have these people that take that thing, they have this uh, uh, when they don't take it, they are not fine. They can do anything silly. So then I now said to him that no, I don't deal on that. Just in order to investigate him to see if we are really is genuine on that uh, thing he's requesting me for. So from there I said, okay. Uh, later from there I now started selling drugs because this evil spirit has always been there, linking me up to negative people everywhere in Nigeria, anywhere I go. I don't know. So these things, I boy, ought to glory be to God. So now. Um, um, I started selling drugs in the sense that uh, the spirit also lead, led me to, you know, people who do some big things. And that was how I started having these things uh, 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 kept under my course. I, I have them, I purchase them, I keep and uh, if there is fire, I sell to them. You know, I always say when the enemy starts with you, you start little by little, but then he gives you a package. You add everything to it everything that is bad is not going to just give you anger and then leave you with something else that he doesn't do he puts it as a package you package it well and give it to you so therefore when you know you are going into that don't take anything of it otherwise you by all means receive his package and last minute the reward of the package we all know it death don't go there Please. One thing I notice, I barely sell my goods. I barely, guys, I, I always look for customer, nobody comes to me. And these people who introduce me to the selling of these things, they are all big, big people in the business. They are all big, big people in the business. So uh, I, I, they sell, lots of sales, sales they make, but when it comes to me, I in months, I don't see, two weeks, I don't see anything. I'll be like, oh, what is happening? So I discovered that, uh, Again, that spirit also now always telling me, since your market, your goose is not selling, why shouldn't you be the one to consume them? This is the voice of the spirit. So, so you mean the evil spirit wanted you to take these drugs that you were taking? Yes, yes, yes. That you wanted to take? Yes, Instead yes. of monetizing it? Instead of monetizing it, yeah, because that is the aim, the objective of purchasing being in the business. But the evil spirit wants to always cripple me to the extent that he will useless my life through the medium of taking it. So he also start telling me every time I'll be saying, so this fight of my two spirits, one will be saying, do this, I'll be saying, no, do this. But one day, I said, ah, this thing, okay, let me do it this way. I said, let me do it, be doing it this way. And I said, okay, since when I'm buying it, 
I needed, I always need someone to go and test it to see the quality, to see how, how authentic it is before it can, I can purchase it. So one mind, one mind not said to me that I should be the one to be doing that. So anytime I want to go for, to go and buy this thing now, I will now use my own hand and test it. The first time I tested it, it, it was, uh, it tastes good then. So uh, I was like, uh, because it's such an additive uh, something. It's, an, it's very additive. So from there, I did this person say, yeah, how did you feel? How did you feel? Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. So, and you know, from there, I was like, okay. But I controlled myself and I couldn't continue. Then later on, there is one, this guy, like I, as I was talking before, who now said to me that he needed someone to give him this thing, to sell the drug to him. So, and they, they were in contact with some other person, but the person was unreachable. So I now sold the thing to him. When I sold the first time to him, he was happy. He said, oh, that is nice that I gave him the authentic thing, that uh, for a very long time, they have uh, not taken this kind of great quality. I said, okay, so before I know it, he started pushing his friends, different, but little do I know that this man I'm dealing with, is not, I'm not just dealing with him, but I'm dealing with a group of people, association. So it's another devil of his own kind. So uh, now I sold the thing to him. He started pushing his people to me. To, uh, bring five, bring two, bring three, bring seven. These are grams. Uh, this are. So that is how I started you know, selling to them, selling to them. Before I know it, the same this man, devil used him. One day he said to me, uh, brother, I say yes. He said, uh, there is this thing I want you to do. At the same time, I don't want you to do it. Hi. I say these people have come again. What kind of uh, uh, language is this? But I kept quiet and I went. But later on, because, uh, you know, as a young guy and I'm in abroad, Papa not there, Mama not there. So I really needed to, you know, make things happen for myself, to make it. So, and these people, I always see them coming with flash, flashy cars, coming with, uh, you know, they are living cool, they are big boys from the look of things. They come with different, different kind of, none of them is uh, uh, simple, live simple life, you know? And these are small, small, tegere, tegere children, uh, 20 years, 20, 19 years, 21, 22, and uh, yeah, I'm almost 40. So I said, no, that uh, there is something uh, about these people. So one day I called the guy. I asked him, uh, my friend, the, the, what, that thing you told me you want to do, you, you want me to do at the same time, though, what, what is it all about? So this guy now said, uh, he laughed. He said, uh, okay, if you, are in, if you want to know about that, I would like you to meet me. I said, okay, where can we meet? Uh, is it in the club? I started mentioning the club that uh, would be preferable. He said, no, 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 no. That him and his guy and his friends do not uh, like going to club in public places. That I must come to their own house. I said, oh, so let's fix a date. If you fix a date, so that date, he said, I should come with five stuff. I went to him. I'm reaching there. So, um, he took me to, he sent someone though, because he, he wasn't the one who came, he sent someone to pick me up. So the person who came, he picked me up, we went there, on reaching there, so I discovered that uh, the place they were living is, uh, is somehow, yeah, because it's such a secret place, in the sense that they have 20 story building up and 20 story building down. So, and they live in the fifth floor, yeah, the underground. So I was like, I'm going there with these guys, they open the lift, we enter, and I was like, ah, my mind started doing them, 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 them. But at the same time, at the same time, I now said to that guy, because I don't want to express that uh, I have fear now to, for them to know. I now said to you, what about that guy? He said, you, you will see him, <laughs> you will see him. I said, okay. So I went in. On reaching there, he saw me, he heard me. He said, Bombo Clark, man, you are welcome to black man's Goss. They say you are welcome to Black God's house. So from there, I said, hey, this is a big reward. What do you mean by Black God's house? I said, well, all the same. I went in. Before I know it, I saw this more than 30 people in a big bed, very big bed. All of them, they perched there and even perching there on the bed. They are like the bed, a lot of space were still there. So some are drinking, the other, there is one particular guy that were lying lifelessly. 
So I said, what kind of place is it? And this is my first time I've seen that kind of bed since I was born. I said, these people I don't understand. What is happening here? Before I know it, I now started looking at them face to face, by one by one. And I realized that these are the same people that he has been sending to me to come and patronize me. That means this, this full group, they are all there. So I now said, ah, what is this all about? Hope I will be safe, you know? Then from there, I, I now said to them, so what is it all about? What is happening and all that? So they started telling me that uh, if I want money now, that they will make money for me. He brought out his phone. He cleaned it with a white rag that was placed uh, there in the house. And he said, how much do I need? I kept quiet. So he started mentioning he said, is it uh, $300 million? Is it uh, $7 million? He started talking, I kept quiet. But later on, he said, oh, uh, you think you can come here and uh, deceive us? Oh, I think we're a spy. He started searching me to see if I have uh, some hidden camera. Say, hope I don't have any, you know. So after searching me, he discovered that nothing. He said, oh. But before I know it, he started telling me that, telling me about all of them, what the sacrifice they made before becoming a member. He told me that that one is stressed forth his and he said that one uh, killed his mother. He said the other one uh, killed his father and uh, his sibling. He said the other one uh, sleeps with uh, his mother every so, so, so date. He said the other one, so this kind of story, all kind of manner of atrocities and all that, he just said to me, and they said that this one that was lying helplessly that I'm seeing, I saw there, that that one initiation just took place not quite long ago. That is why he's lying lifelessly there, that it was last night, around 12, his home took place. That after he woke up, that he would become a millionaire. I'm just thinking, so this thing is real. Things that we used to watch in the movies is really real. Wow. We have to be careful. The world is strange now. So from there, all of that, I said, ah, no. But then I knew something wrong is really happening because that is not what I bargained on. That's what I expected. So I started meditating inside my own heart, saying, God, please, just help me to be out of this place, just to be out, just to be out, just to be out. So as I was meditating that, meditating that, so this young man, the main young man now, went uh, to the other room, the, the, the first room, with all his members. All of them left me there. And I and that guy that was lying helplessly, only I and him remained there. The rest went, so they went and had secret meeting for me. After which they came back on coming back. So when they went, I meditated more again. When they came back, they now brought tea. And they said, this tea, is made specially for me. So they brought this tea and they said, this tea is made specially for me. But before that tea, yes, that time that they was, he was, the same guy was telling me about how those people were being initiated. So after he told me about the story or the atrocity they committed in order to become member, so he now said to me that now that I should look at him, eyeball to eyeball, I started looking at him. So when I was looking at him, I discovered that this person started uh, transforming. He started transforming into a being, a being. And the person that said to me, as a matter of fact, he, she, he becomes she, in the sense that she now said to me that uh, uh, this is the goddess now. And uh, he was like this. So the more he's doing like this, the more I'm seeing him expanding, going, you know, this kind of thing. And his voice also changed to a lady's voice. I said, ah, what is this? So after all of that, I said, man, uh, later, before they now went out, when they see all he could, uh, 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 all he could carry out in order to initiate me unknowingly or in which is their best way, but that failed. I remember he always said to me, where is your heart? Say, my friend, you have to bring your heart here. It cannot be here only with your body. Let your heart be here. He was saying that. 
So later, they now went to the other room and had secret meeting among themselves. Coming out to where I was, they brought that tea. They gave me that tea. They said this tea is made specially for me, that uh, I should drink it. I look around, there is no other cup on their hands, no other cup, they don't have any cup, just one for me. I say, hi, these people have come in another way. I think uh, it's something, uh, I don't know, but something bad, evil. Hi. I say, God, please help me. Even if I drink this tea, let me not die here, and let me not die in that southern Asia. Let me manage and be able to come back to Nigeria, that I know mm -hmm. God will see me through, because uh, I've always known somewhere by God's grace. So now, um, after that, uh, they become confused, and he now said, all of a sudden, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Don't worry. <laughs> He starts with his eyes. His behavior became abnormal from the look of things. I don't know. But, you know, so he said, I'll let you go. <laughs> I'll let you go. Then later he assigned someone to take me off. Though that he, I drank it. He took me off. He sent somebody to take me out. So that guy who took me off, as we were going, he started telling me so many things that, uh, ah, that I don't know that there hasn't been anyone who come to them like this and go for free. That that person must be initiated or die. I said, ah. So he started saying all sorts of things, and uh, after everything, I said, oh, when I was going, though, the guy now said to me that, uh, okay, go, I'll let you go, but expect me in your house. That was the last statement he dropped for me. So when I went to my place, throughout that week, I realized that when I sleep, I see Python. I always see this dream, because it was in the dream. Python would be there lying alongside with me, and... Uh, Whenever I sleep, through, it continues for two, two weeks. Yeah, I always see that python, that python. Even when, you know, like we used to sleep on the bed, sometimes we can turn around. So when I turn around, I will see my leg on top of that uh, python. I will feel it like if it's free. But later on, when I wake up, I will say, hey, this python. So when I woke up, I could see the python. The, the shadow, not the python as a snake now. I could see the, so the shadow of that uh, python, like physically the shadow, going out of my door. Going out of my door. So this thing continues, it continues, continues. Then also there is this skeleton. This skeleton that always when he comes, that skeleton when he comes, he knock, strange knock on my door, and the door will open. He will come. When he come, in dream though, in dream. So, when he come, he will start, he will start talking with me. He will say that uh, I'm a, I'm a few lords. That he will be saying that I belong to, to, to that thing, that I belong to that thing, that you told the sellers that I belong to that thing. So, I'll be like, ah, so when I woke up, I would still see the skeleton going out, the shadow. It's always like this. So after all of this whole thing, I now said, ah, this thing is uh, really too much. Then one day, I didn't know how it all happened because uh, the same this guy who tried to initiate me into the occult, because that was occult, that they, where they make money. So one time, I didn't know how they now came in another way through some other people I don't know about. So they started contacting me, but I was thinking they are different people, customers on their own. But little do I know that they have link with these people. So one of those days, one of those days, they called me and I went to give them that thing they needed, the, the stuff, the job. So reaching there, I discovered that they want to kidnap me. They are not there for drugs. They are not there to patronize me. They are there to kidnap me. So I started running for my dear life. As I was running and running and running, then all of a sudden I fell inside a ditch. So in that ditch, I sustained injury, big injury that I treated for complete one month, everyday injection. Yeah, because uh, from there, people now came to my rescue. And after which, I said, ah, this thing is too much here. 
since I cannot make it over there, uh, let me trace my route back home. I said, okay, let me come back to Nigeria, believing that uh, the solution is lying here uh, in, uh, at home in Nigeria for me. So I said, whatever it is, that I will come back home. So when I came back home, I said, ah, that I'm tired and the uh, age is no more telling on me. I said, it's time for me to get married and see if this whole thing will be put to an end, that when I get married, everything will stop. That was my own personal thinking. I said, okay, but I do not know that these evil spirits uh, have another plan for me. Another plan, always, there is always plan, 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 A, plan, B, for me, only me. I don't know what I did to this evil spirit, but I thank God today. That is why I'm thanking God, and that is why I'm here testifying. Thank you, Jesus. So, so now I now went to somewhere and I met my wife, the woman I'm supposed to get married to. I said, okay, let me take her to her village and see her people. The very first time I decided to go to her village to know her people, on my way going, between the boundary, between my own place and to her own place, there comes a terrible accident. I was driving, and before I know it, somebody went in for it. The bike guy died instantly. And uh, from there, car spoiled beyond report, uh, repair, and I was arrested. I was arrested in the cell for two weeks. Why the deceased family came and all sorts of settlements and all that by God's grace. So everything just continued like that. So after which I said, oh, since this whole thing is like this and now I'm also becoming, I've become short of cash, uh, some token. I said, let me look for another way to make sure that I see myself out of this uh, country again. So then I know the plan of going to Bahrain. So then I went to Bahrain. I left my wife behind. I left to Bahrain. Uh, reaching Bahrain, God being kind, I got a job. So as I was doing that job, but one thing I knew is starting from day one, I have always been on nightmare. There is always this nightmare that I normally have. Every time nightmare. Nightmare has become mother of the day in my life. Yeah, too much of nightmare, too much of nightmare. So when I went to Bahrain, that, those nightmare continued. So they said that uh, I now had this nightmare where I find myself, when I was in Bahrain, uh, when I find myself in the deep sea, the bear of the sea, that just like, our sea is deep. They down, 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 they ground. There is a bed there. There is a bed. I found myself on that bed lying, lying like, no, no. So I was lying. Pillow was there too. So I, uh, I, I always lie there and I see myself uh, with some beings that surround me. And uh, I see myself giving instruction, instructing them, like to go to the world just, but I don't remove, but I don't go away from that place. So I don't go away from that bed, but the beings around goes out. I instruct them, go, go, go. But I'm always in that bed, lying. So one day... So you, mean, so you mean this affirms the world, the confession of the evil spirit that says you are a king, you give commands? Uh, I don't know. But I think that is uh, what it is. Mm. Yes. So now... Um, I now find out that uh, in that dream, I, I, there is bed, there is bed there, there is bed there, and uh, the pillow is there, and I'm always lying down. I don't come out from there. So that's in that same dream, that same day, I saw one man on white garments. That man now came and said, you, come out from there. So there's another man standing by uh, he says, saying, no, he cannot come out. This man belongs there. He now said, where? He said, he belongs to that place that he is lying. That I belong there. 
So a man now said, no, that this man don't belong here, that this man belong to Jesus. So come out. So the more this man now said, come out, this other man now tried to obscure him. That is to object. He always dare to say, no, 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 no. Then this man now make another of him. Another person now appeared from nowhere. I think that person now happens to be like an angel. So he now said to that person, he gave instruction to that person, he said, go there and bring forth that man. So that uh, angel now came in and he, he met me down deep to sea where I was lying and he held my hand. He said, follow me. So I now followed him. As I was going, so I discovered, so I was swimming out, up, up, up. So I discovered that, I discovered that uh, the, the, the wave of the water, the sea, it was too much. And I know that wasn't wave though, that happens to be that force, you know, that is trying to pull me back. So it was very strong and severe. I pulled him so, uh, the, 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 the angel was still, have, still held me on my hand and were just coming out, coming out, coming out. Then the wave was still dry, but on, the, on that process, I now woke up. I said, no, ah, that uh, I have to, then when I was in Nigeria, I applied for one country that happens to be my first country, choice of country to go to, but because of time delay and all that. So when I was there, uh, I spent nine months in uh, Bahrain. Then they now gave me a call that uh, I should come with my passport to submit it so that them can uh, put in the visa. So I said, okay, that is great. That is another great opportunity for me to come down and uh, to Nigeria and uh, run to God for a solution because I know it wasn't uh, easy and uh, things is really wrong somewhere with me. So when I came down, I said no. I came in on the tours. So the following day, Sunday, I post to the service. I said, I have to be here. So I came down. I ran into synagogue church of all nation. And uh, so, and I was privileged to be prayed for by the evangelist. So when he laid his hand on me, I, from there, I didn't know what happened anymore. I didn't know what happened. I felt uncomfortable and unease. There is this heat, this heat that I experienced that time. And that touch he touched me uh, was so heavy, like hammer, you know, like big hammer. So, I think from there, I, I was off totally. Yes, I was off. And you were delivered? Yeah, and I was delivered to the so, glory of God. So we put our hands together for the miracle work in God. <laughs> that clap is not enough. Put your hands together for the miracle work in God. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when I finally stood up, just like I saw here. So I felt so light. I felt like big thing, like caterpillar uh, has gone out of me. You know, so I was like very weak too. At the same time, I needed some rest. So I was struggling and telling the usher, please let me sit here a bit, please, you know. But then I was glorifying the name of the Lord because I know he has done the unexpected and the, the unimaginable thing in my life. Thank you, Jesus. So, sir, after your deliverance, can you tell us those changes you've observed? Yes. Uh, after my deliverance, I noticed that uh, I'm calm. Very, very calm. There is this uh, calmness that is raining all over me. Even the way I talk, like I've made series of calls, you know, I noticed that uh, even uh, my wife noticed it. And she, she said, uh, uh, where, where are you? Are you in synagogue? So I said, yes, yes, yes. So I now ask her to watch the that. So oh, no wonder, you know. So people noticed it and I give God the glory. Then again, uh, I had a dream. There is this 
Yeah. So uh, before that dream, all those nightmares that I was having, the snake, the skeleton, and many, many tormenting nightmares, they were all gone to the glory of God. So what about the spirit of anger? Those evil yeah. spirits that were disturbing you, tormenting your life? Like I said, I have calmness. So the spirit of anger is no more. I have calmness. Calmness that uh, I never even think of, expected, because the way is, I know something special is happening now within me, and I never feel this way since I was born, or let me put it this way, since I became sensible. Yes, since I became sensible. I never feel this way. Shall we put our hands together for the miracle who walk in God? So sorry to take you back. Can you, you said when you were undergoing deliverance, you mean you didn't know that it was a woman of God that was praying for you? Uh, no, I didn't know. So you I saw it on the screen right now? Yeah, I just saw, uh, uh, please, uh, I just, something I want to say uh, to everybody, uh, like, the, the ushers and uh, our mommy in the Lord, Mama Evelyn, uh, that wasn't really me. Yes, that wasn't really me. That happens to be the evil spirits in person. So I also saw that those Osha, they really tried. They really tried. So any way I might have uh, injured or, you know, be asked to anyone, please forgive me. It wasn't me. Thank you, Jesus. I have never been so emotional like this. I mean, I have been. But this is so touching. I mean, all the things he went through. Hey, like I said before, we only watch this in movies, not real life. He has experienced the real thing. We give glory to God for his freedom now. So as the saying goes that experience is the best teacher, Having gone through these negative experiences. Okay. Yeah, so, um, thank you, Jesus. So, I have this uh, victorious dream. Yeah, it was victorious in the sense that it's a symbol that uh, tag my deliverance. Uh, says I'm totally delivered. Uh, I saw this man, one of this court member, one of this court's member. In that dream. So the man is familiar, someone I know in the physical. So he said to me, So I think that uh, I can just leave them like that uh, on my own. So I looked at him, I said, I don't have any business with you. He said, Is that what I believe? I said, Yes. So he went. That dream caught. So the second one, uh, there is this, uh, this demon because of the way the appearance. Yeah, you could see even in that dream that this is demon because he has this uh, uh, a black, one side black, one side painted with this, uh, you know, like this horror film, something horror, uh, somehow. So you could know this is demon. So I saw that thing, that demon, having something like acid inside a cup, and he held it on his hand, and I saw some beings, he, he, he pours that uh, acid to them. Anyone he pours it to, uh, the uh, acid now penetrates into the person's body system and starts eating, eating up the system, you know? I could see the, the thing, like saw. Saw starts uh, emerging from nowhere, all over the skin, the body, and they were like reacting some kind of a reaction. So the same thing, same thing like acid he had, he, he now targeted me and he was like, he called my son name. He said, he called my son name. He said, you, okay, this is for you. He now threw that, uh, pour that uh, same liquid um, towards me, but he did not get close to me. He, as he was pouring it, like an inch, something else. So I did like this. So the thing ended there. And from there, I now, the dream now caught. So when I woke up, I said, wow, that is a true 
fine that my deliverance is permanent. And uh, I pray that... Uh, so you mean God Almighty has put a separation between you and the evil forces? Exactly. And indeed, that dream was a dream of victory. Dream of victory. Dream of victory. So we put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So you mean this deliverance has drawn you closer to God, and now you believe that in God, everything you need is in Him? Yes, I believe. By His grace, I believe, because He is the ultimate and uh, the author and finisher of our faith. So, come real concern, I'm attached to Him by His grace. Yes, so as the saying goes, that experience is the best teacher. Having gone through this negative experience, having lived in a world of darkness, and now you've been brought into the light, what word of advice or encouragement do you have for viewers all over the world watching you right now? Oh, okay. Yeah, firstly, I would say to the youth, the youth, yeah, because uh, the youth are the great leaders of tomorrow. They are the future of tomorrow. Yeah, you see, during my youthful age, permit me to come this way to take it from where I'm coming from now. So during my youthful time, I didn't make use of it the way it should have been. And that also affected my adult age now. The way I am now as an adult is affecting me in different ways, different ways. When it comes, I see them, I say, oh, this is it something I would have taken care of when I was youth. So that is why I'm directing this advice to the youth. They should always be mindful of the kind of friends they make. Sometimes they say, um, um, best of same feather flocks together. Uh, it works somehow, 70% is true, but 30% might not be it. And they say, you have to surround yourself with same wolves that have right direction as you have. So all of this is what I want to tell the youth. If you are in school, please take your study serious. If you are learning some kind of skill, anyhow, position or where you find yourself. What matters is your focus. Your focus. Be focus on that which you are doing. You see, slow but assuredly. You know, even if you take it slowly, like the snail, the works of snail, at the end, it must get to its destination because everything little gets big and everything big starts little. Everybody should be mindful again, especially the youth, the kind of friends they make while in the school while in the school, because in my own case, that was what misled me. But to glory be, glory be to the God, glory be to God for today. The parents, yeah, I have them too, advice. So the parents, yes. You see, there is this, uh, like it is written somewhere in the Holy Scripture, as we should bring up a child in the way he should grow, that when he grows up, he shall depart not from it. That should be our standard. Yes, the parents, that should be our standard. Not this kind of uh, lifestyle of saying, I'm a Christian, but deep down in you, you know you are not one. No, let's stop deceiving one another. Let's stop deceiving one another. You say you're a Christian, but later you go secretly, you do some silly things. Also, you visit and patronize the witch doctors, and you say you're a Christian. When you come back home, you put them under your bed. You go to this place, you put them like this, you do this. Your children are watching you. You may not know. When you are not in the home, in the house, they might be playing and be going over here and there, they will find something. They say, oh, so these things, you see, the mat you lay down for your family, I bet you, that's the mat your family will grow up with, your children. 
So let's always be conscious of the things we do in the secrets. If we say we are Christian, please, it's advisable that we'll be really one. God, what God wants from us is just the contrite spirits. No matter how little, you see, no matter little faith we may have, even let it be like of that size of mustard seed, that it is the faith that conquered the world. So, provided it is unto his glory, unto him, but not Satan, not human being, not faith in faith, my dear, it is settled in Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands louder for the miracle work in God. Yes, that means, as Prophet T.B. Joshua says, that don't be a part-time Christian. Be a full-time Christian. And when you realize that you are bowed down in bondage, seek the face of God. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? Espectadores de todo el mundo, acabamos de escuchar el maravilloso testimonio del señor Patrick el domingo pasado. Él vino aquí a la iglesia sinagoga de todas las naciones a recibir su liberación. Él fue libre de un espíritu ancestral que lo atormentaba desde pequeño a su familia. Y a él, él nos comenta que este espíritu le ha estado atormentando y lo ha llevado incluso a meterse en cuestiones de ocultismo, a practicar actividades que perjudicaron su vida, a tener pesadillas y a no tener ningún tipo de paz. Él nos comenta cómo este espíritu afectó su vida, sus relaciones le trajo ira a su vida, tenía un espíritu de enojo que incluso quería que matara a las personas que consumiera drogas, pero cuando él vino aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones bajo la dirección de un sueño profético en el que él recibía su liberación él recibió el toque del evangelista y de la pastora Evelyn Joshua y ahora es completamente libre para la gloria de Dios él nos dice que tiene paz, que tiene gozo que ya no siente esa ira ni ese enojo y nos aconseja a que rindamos nuestra vida a Dios, a los jóvenes a seguir en el camino de Dios y a los padres a seguir guiándolos bajo la fe en Jesucristo. Les acteurs du monde entier nous venons entendre le magnifique témoignage de délivrance de Monsieur Patrick de l'emprise de l'idole de la famille. Il est Nigérien mais résident du Bahreïn. Il remercie Dieu pour sa bonté dans sa vie. Il explique que tout a commencé dans son enfance. Il vient d'une famille de la terre et plusieurs fois par an, ses parents l'amenaient au village où il faisait des sacrifices à un arbre et donnait à manger aux enfants des viandes utilisées pour ces sacrifices. Cette idole a commencé à tourmenter tous les membres de sa famille et son grand frère est parti à l'école et il a dû rejoindre un secte et il a perdu sa vie à cette idole. En grandissant, il s'est retrouvé en rejoint un secte également. Il a dû voyager à l'étranger de peur de perdre sa vie comme son grand frère. Et là, à l'étranger, il n'a pas prospéré. Il avait des difficultés. Et il a rejoint une société. Revenu ici au Nigeria, il a été ici à la Squan où il a reçu la prière de l'un des évangélistes et la serpente de Dieu, pasteur Révi Joshua. Et il a été délivré complètement. Et il, maintenant, il ne fait plus des cauchemars. Il ne voit plus des pitons, un squelette dans le rêve. Il est libéré complètement. Et il conseille aux jeunes d'avoir foi en Dieu et de se concentrer sur leurs études et sur le métier. Et il conseille Je également aux parents de lever leurs enfants dans la chemin de l'éternel. Les stateurs restent connectés. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We thank the Lord Jesus for the great thing he has done. He's been doing it all along. But this one is another to his glory. We thank him so much for what he has done because if it had not been him, that is on his side, they would have killed him there. He wouldn't have gotten back to Nigeria for this deliverance. We thank God for everything that he has done in his life. We know the best is yet to come. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my people of God, thank you so much for watching this video with me. Testimony, so shocking. I really appreciate you all watching. I am learning a lot to teach your children. Please, thank you all for watching this with me. This is Emma from Tema. May the Lord be with you all in the day, in the night, in the weeks. I love you. I love you. I love you. Stay blessed and keep your eyes on Jesus Christ because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you.